Greetings, everyone. Mark Tapson for the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Well, I resisted as long as I could, but the time has come for me to address the cultural and now political phenomenon known as Taylor Swift. I call myself a culture critic. I mean, for many years I've been preaching about the urgency for conservatives to get more engaged in pop culture and to realize just what a significant political battleground it is. So I suppose I should be ashamed to admit my near-total ignorance of the wildly popular pop singer, her songs, her videos, her boyfriends. I've heard a total of one song by Taylor Swift, and I can't even remember the name of it. It was catchy enough, but she's not the Beatles. However, to her multitude of young female fans known as Swifties, she basically is today's cultural equivalent of the Beatles. Her songs and performances have made her a billionaire. A film of her concert tour from last year is the highest grossing performance film of all time. She was Time Magazine's Person of the Year for 2023. She has astronomically boosted NFL ticket and merchandising sales just by dating one of its players. I don't have time to even scratch the surface of all the Grammys and other accolades that she has received and records she's broken. She has reached and possibly surpassed that stratosphere of fame usually reserved for artists who go by just one name. Madonna, Cher, Prince, Beyonce. She could just go by Taylor, but maybe with an exclamation mark. Taylor. What all this means, and the reason I'm addressing this, is that Taylor wields enormous cultural influence and thus political influence, and she's leaning heavily into that. She's a big supporter of abortion rights, of the rights of the alphabet people, of voting rights, gun control, Black Lives Matter, all the usual left-wing causes, and her fans listen and follow. On social media in 2020, Taylor urged her acolytes to check their voter registration ahead of elections, which resulted in 65,000 of them registering to vote within one day of her post. Last year, a few conservative commentators expressed concern that the Democrat Party, to which Taylor Swift, of course, subscribes, would successfully exploit her popularity among young people to boost the election chances of decrepit puppet President Joe Biden in 2024. After all, a recent poll revealed that about 30% of voters under 35 would vote for whichever candidate Taylor Swift endorsed. Those commentators were initially mocked by the left as conspiracy theorists. But lo and behold, now Democratic pundits are giddy and salivating over the likelihood that Taylor Swift will be trotted out in support of the Democratic presidential candidate, whoever that may end up being, and leave the Republican candidate in the dust. One conservative commentator said, no problem, we have influencers on our side too, like Kid Rock, uh, Ted Nugent, John Voigt. Needless to say, that's not a threat that has the left quaking in its boots. Donald Trump's popularity and, conversely, Biden's low approval rating are such that this election, it's going to take a lot more than just widespread rampant voter fraud to beat Trump. And it's looking like the Democrats are counting on a not-so-secret weapon to push their candidate over the top. Taylor. Conservatives seem to alternate between hating Taylor Swift for dominating NFL coverage every time she attends her boyfriend's games and dismissing her influence entirely. Both are mistakes. Swift has become more than just a pop idol. She has become the political flashpoint for a couple of generations of young women who, unlike young men, were already drifting away from conservatism. And she's publicly condemned Donald Trump as a white supremacist and a threat to democracy. It's one thing for conservatives like me to ignore her music and her love life, but it's sheer folly for the right to underestimate her. Biden is pathetically unpopular, as is Kamala Harris, but Taylor commands legions of adoring young voters who will get behind whatever Democrat candidate she anoints in 2024 and in the future. The moral of the story is, politics is downstream from culture, and American culture is pop culture. Conservatives, myself included, are passionate about conserving the glorious cultural heritage that is the legacy of Western civilization. Tragically, most young people today are ignorant of that cultural legacy. Pop culture is the only culture they know or care about. If conservatives care about passing down the best that our culture has produced and preserving our freedoms in the political arena, then we need to get in the game, engage young people where they are, and guide them out of the darkness into the light. Thanks for listening. See you next time.